I'm working at Bartlett Jones. Drawn to Death is canceled. Sony had said to us, and to their credit, they said, we'll make something with you after this regardless. Because we all believed in Drawn to Death. Believe it or not, we thought it was going to do well. And we were all kind of surprised. Took some people longer to be surprised than others. Uh, but we said, okay, let's, uh, let's make something else. Okay, great. We were kind of kicking around the can trying to figure it out. And, and again, I'm not going to name names, but the person who didn't, who said, look, I don't want you to release this yet because his boss who's left the company said, probably not a good idea to put this out, but we canceled this. Um, and I said, okay, that, I get that. And so his boss left a while ago and now I found out, I didn't know until I was at Colin's show and some Sony people were there Friday, last Friday. And they're like, oh, that person left. They retired. I'm like, shit, really? So then I'm like, oh, fuck it. I don't care. Now that they're gone, I want to share it. So this person came to us and said, yeah, I know you're working on some stuff, but we really want to do with you guys uh, another service-based game. We want to really try to make it a push for PlayStation Plus. We're going to spend a bunch of money on it. It'll be, it'll be server authenticated. It's not peer-to-peer. -peer. We really want it to be super mainstream and we want it to be um, obviously compelling and fun. And we want it to drive people to subscribe to PlayStation Plus and all, all kinds of things. It was a big deal. And uh, so we spent about five months doing prototypes. And uh, I don't think this was our strongest prototype, but it's what Sony wanted. I've already talked about some of the ones. The one that I think at the end that we really should have made was basically PUBG before Fortnite came out. It was a battle royale, but it was on a space station that was coming apart as it was going towards a black hole. And there was only an escape pod for one person. And so everybody, or one team, depending on the mode. So everybody was fighting for that escape pod and the, the level was getting smaller and smaller as parts were falling into the black hole. And there were really cool things you could do. It was like, you could put yourself, like you could get all these cool weapons and you could put yourself in like a cryo sleep and you would wake up without any of your weapons. But what it would basically do is your next life, if you could find the cryo chamber, you could go to sleep and wake up with the weapons. You could like send your future selves items because for the next battle royale, right? And there was like zero G sections where you flew out into space and you were shooting. It, it was very rough. I wish we would have done that one. And we actually did a rough prototype, but it, it they ultimately wanted this. Rocket League was all the the rave. So they wanted this. They wanted something much more mainstream. And we pitched them a couple of different things. They said, go with that. It started out being a game where you were basically playing Rocket League, but with giant water cannons. And we couldn't quite make the physics work. And so we ended up changing it to this. I took all the sound out of this because it was originally edited to a run the jewels song and I don't want to get a copyright and there's a lot more content somewhere I can't find it but this was just like a sizzle reel this was done in unreal I guess four this was not finished this wasn't even alpha but this was all playable and it was pretty fun actually if you had the right tweaks but here you go we were calling this I think we were calling it wrecking ball or tornado ball I don't remember but here you go this is uh, what we were doing so you're able to suck the ball and blow the ball. Yes, we had fun with this. Uh, you can run on walls. You can steal it from people. You can charge it up. And you're ba it's basically Rocket League. You're trying to get it into a goal. Um, and you're these kind of robot things. You could customize them. They could fly around. They, you know, what, I mean, it's pretty what you see is what you get. But there was a lot of nuance to the physics. Uh, you could fight over the balls. If a teammate came and helped you, you could have more of a, a, a suck effect. You had shields that you could block the ball. Um, you could tackle people. Um, you could do English curve shots, all kinds of things. So it was, it was neat and it was getting there. Uh, oh, you could pass it to teammates. I haven't seen this in ages. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, you, you can tell it's got rocket league influences and, um, you know, and you did, there was no goalie. You could run into the goal whenever you wanted, like Rocket League. So you could kind of be uh, uh, the goalie if you wanted to, or you could have three guys guarding it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Unreal. This was uh, Unreal is what this was. And uh, there's a lot of concept art. I just got to find it. But anyway, so we did this. Um, we pitched it to Sony. Uh, they seemed pretty happy. 
And so they were like, um, you know, go with God. Let's do this shit, man. Let's let's like I said, we, we were we got more office space and all this shit. And then somewhere along the lines, what happened was the partner that we were working with uh, at PlayStation Plus, we weren't talking to PlayStation Plus, but they were. And somewhere along the lines, my understanding was PlayStation Plus was like, um, maybe we don't want to kind of do a PlayStation Plus centric game or something. I, and then they just said, yeah. And so we can't really, f and, and Sony didn't have, Sony First Party at the time did not have the funding because they had already spent their money for the year and put the money into other teams. And without PlayStation Plus coming on to sort of help fund it, they were like, we can't continue to support it. So we have to cancel it and we don't have any more work for you guys. And we were exhausted and I was tired and Nick was tired and the failure of drawn to death was emotional. And so we just let the team know almost immediately that this is probably the end of the line. And about a week and a half later, it was really bad timing. We ended up talking to Psyonix who makes now they're part of Epic, but they make, uh, I don't know if they were at the time, but they make uh, the, the, what's it called? The, 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 the rocket league. And they were looking to branch out as well, but you know, most all our programmers were mostly gone that had worked on the physics and stuff and the tuning. And we just, you know, the we didn't have a build that was ready to go out and play. So we sent them a build because they seemed interested, but it wasn't one that played very well. And so we never heard back from them um, because it was one of, you know, we didn't know we were going to get canceled. So it wasn't like we had like a sexy build ready to go. We were like a month and a half into a, a three month milestone and things were broken and all over the place and blah 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 so i can't imagine the fucking stress involved making this shit so steven it's like my parents for years like why don't you make games you're good at playing them i mean you know it's it's stressful but it was fun for a very long time for me but you know running an independent company and nick really did the uh nick really did all the heavy lifting when it came to like f the finances and you know, the management and all that shit. I was just, you know, creating stuff and designing and, and leading the company at a creative level. He's now running, uh, what are they called? Uh, That's No Moon, which I hope we see something from him sooner than later. It's been a while. I'd love to see what they're working on. So who owns the rights? I think Sony still owns them because they funded it. And so nobody at Sony has ever told me not to show it. It was just, except this guy. But now that he's gone, and he didn't say don't show it for legal reasons. He was saying don't show it because his boss didn't seem to think it would be a good look if people found out that it was uh, canceled and his boss is gone and now he's gone. So fuck it. How many people w was on this team? Not a lot. This was a team of about 25 maybe. Um, so yeah, there you go. So that was, uh, I think it was called, I think it was wrecking ball, but it was fun, man. It was, it was in the tackles were great. And, you know, it, the hardest thing about this was was doing the online physics for the programmers uh, of, of, you know, making sure the ball and all the, the calculations happening with the ball were shared properly across at the same time. Because uh, there's a lot, it's not like a projectile based game where once the weapon fires, you're able to just go, okay, well, we know where we can, we can process that locally because all we need to know is where it fired the ball was constantly having forces affected on this thing and it was tough too because we i actually brought in a design consultant halfway through a guy who wrote the book a theory of fun raf coster's great nuts and bolts designer because i could never figure out the length of the air now they're, they're they look like bolts of lightning but it's, it was a better game when you had to get really close to the ball, but there was the intuitive desire to be able to affect change in the ball from far away. And so it was a lot of work to kind of find that sweet spot. In fact, uh, Steve Merghart, one of our great artists on the game, uh, he brought in a leaf blower. When we were trying to figure out the physics, he brought this leaf blower in. And we got a beach ball, just try to figure out the physics of this and played a little. I mean, we, you know, we weren't tackling people in the office. Uh, but, uh, we were, at, we were actually using leaf blowers to figure it out. Yeah. And you could run on the wall. And if you ran on the wall with the ball, it charged it up and it went faster. And so you had a better chance of getting it past a goalie and all that shit. Um, there were, this was the only arena for that build. Um, we were definitely testing out other arenas and stuff, but we weren't that far along. This was about five, 
well, this was about four months of work after we locked the prototype, but we spent about five or six months. That's why I don't have any ill will towards Sony. I mean, these guys, we released a failure of a game. Um, they promised us we'd do something else. They funded us for, you know, six, seven months just looking for a game to, to make. And then we all made this um, and they funded that. And they just, end of the day, were like, we're just out of money in the development budget for this year. And so, you know, you know, they didn't owe us anything. And so it was a, it was a great experience working with those guys. Uh, were you contemplating personalities for the characters? Not really. So it was basically, and if I can find some of the concept art, I will. But it was, it was really built to be a service-based ga game from the ground up. So these robots were really sort of meant to be pretty generic and then it was going to be you know the same old shit it was going to be items and top hats and cigars and you know jerseys and you know you could you could unlock and buy little tchotchkes to put on them but it wasn't like there was no narrative or it wasn't anything like that no there it was it was a pure sports game so there you go that was um uh, i don't think it was vac ball leave and maybe it was vacuum ball but i don't maybe it was because it was originally air but i don't fucking remember i don't know why it was uh, I don't know why it was uh, uh, video VBL. Maybe it was vacuum ball. I don't think we would have ever stuck with that.